A very good morning and welcome to another edition of the Talk of the Town. The rule of law in Sri Lanka uh, is currently facing certain challenges. It's been facing quite a lot of pressure since last year. The Aragalea, uh, the people's uprising, demanding for more accountability uh, in the face of the massive economic crisis that Sri Lanka faced. Now we see certain pieces of legislation being pushed through without consulting stakeholders. Um, starting off, of course, is the anti-terrorism bill. It was initially presented in March um, and it was withdrawn because of the draconian provisions that were in it and mainly because of the public opposition against uh, that act. But now we see the anti-terrorism bill, same name, but it has come again. And this time around, has things changed? Uh, we also have the cyber security bill uh, that has been published on the Gazette and we wait to see what the government's next move would be. To discuss these matters and much more, we've got with us here today President's Council Farman Kasim, the Legal Secretary of the Samagi Chanabala Vegia. A very good evening, Sharon. Welcome to the show. Good, down. good evening, Sharon. Uh, so, President's Council Farman Kasim, starting off, um, there has been a, quite a number of attempts to subvert public uh, discourse about matters of importance to the country. Uh, the people are not allowed to voice their opinion to a certain degree. We saw uh, during the Aragalea, people were out and about. They were really expressing their views and speaking about uh, the issues that really matter to them. But now, um, there is a slight campaign to instill fear in the hearts of people. And these pieces of legislation are coming out against such a backdrop. Now, they're coming out, they're being withdrawn, they're coming again. Uh, what do you think is really happening here? So, Sharan, what's happening is uh, during a period like the Aragalaya or when the shout comes to push, people will come out whatever it may be. Hmm. We have seen that in the history, we have seen that in, in the past. Whatever legislation you bring in or whatever laws that you bring in, you can't stop a people's uprising. Hmm. Uh, the people uh, rose uh, for, against uh, the dictatorial and the economic catastrophe that uh, Gota by Rajapaksha mm -hmm. uh, and the SLP with the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna and the Rajapakshas brought towards this country. Mm -hmm. So people rose against that and uh, they expected something better, but we have still got the Rajapaksha regime uh, together with Ranil Vikramasinghe, who is part of the Rajapaksha regime, leading the country. Why the people are silent at the moment, uh, Shalin, is because uh, they know an election is coming next year. And at that election, the people will then voice their opinion. Hmm. But um, are you 100% sure that an election or elections will be held next year? Yes, if there is no presidential election by next year, November, hmm. or if elections are not called uh, six weeks before, then we won't have a president. Because the term of this president would naturally end. Naturally end. Like we don't have the local councils, no, local councils now and the Pradesh Sabhas. So we won't have a president. Uh, but uh, we're really in quite uncharted territory because as you and I speak right now, we are in an election period. Because as at now, the local government elections have been announced and the date of the local government elections has been postponed indefinitely. So certain things that the government is even doing right now, like transfer of police officers, very routine things that need to happen in a country um, are quite illegal <laughs> on the basis that it is an election period and during an election period these things can't be done. So my question to you is, do you think that there is a chance uh, wh where we might see something out of the box, a little bit different than what is written in our constitution where the president continues on? No, there is nothing of that sort that is, that is, uh, that's our opinion peddled by the Ranil Rajapaksha or Ranil Vikramasinghe and Rajapaksha regime just to put confusion into the people. That's not going to happen. 100% there's going to be an election next year. It's going to be a presidential election uh, or if Ranil Vikramasinghe decides to dissolve parliament, a parliamentary election. But come what may, there will be a presidential election before November next year and that's for sure. You cannot, uh, I mean, local government elections have been postponed time and time again in Sri Lanka. Hmm. It, this is not the first time, so it's nothing unique. Hmm. This is almost probably, uh, in my memory of the speaking off my head, it's about the fourth time. Hmm. And anyway, Ranil Vikramasinghe has a tendency to postpone local government elections, which he did even in 2016. Hmm. Uh, he, has, he has a fear of having elections because he loses elections. I mean, uh, that's simple. Long and short is that Ranil Vikramasinghe is not capable of winning an election. 
Um, so, the more he can postpone and wait till the last day. So, he will enjoy life. He is now in, in, uh, in, uh, in the States, he is traveling the globe, he will go to uh, Malaysia next, he will go to uh, Cuba, he went to, he, I think he went to Cuba also last week and he will travel the world and enjoy his life for the next year, year and two months. Hmm. And that's it for the Talk of the Town. It's back to the morning fix on Yes 101. Hello there, a very good morning and welcome to another edition of the Talk of the